Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Sherry and Huggy Bear. Yeah. So, if you were on our Facebook Live today, you saw that we're going to be doing um, wheelchair, no, what are they called? Walker bags for vets. Um, so, we've got that challenge out there for you that this month, that everybody who wants to participate will make one bag. Um, whether you want to send it to us at our shop or you want to um, be able to uh, give it to some you know local that's perfectly fine just let us know post pictures on our friends of ANA white page we are going to be doing a sew along with a live class live lesson on um, the, uh, the 17th Friday the 17th it will run from 2 in the afternoon till 7 in the evening. You can come and go, stay, whatever. You can make as many as you want. You can make one. But this is going to be our challenge for the month. It is a give back challenge. Uh, we announced it at 1. Everybody was so excited about it. And we're helping one of our own local sewers, um, who is a relatively new sewer. Michelle was on with us today. And it's a project that Progressive does uh, uh, projects, give back um, the, their philanthropic part of their business. And her group is in charge of making and filling these bags for our vets in the nursing homes and the hospitals. So I know everybody that got on and said, oh, I want to do it, I want to do it. Is there a pattern? How do I do it? How much fabric do I need? What do I need? Well, to make it easy, get out your pen and paper. I'm going to tell you what you need. I'm going to show you. And Honey Bear and I are going to show you how quick and easy it is to make. And then there's tons of stuff that you can use um, that you already have. It is a great stash buster, among other things. So, what you're going to need is you need two half yard cuts of fabric preferably two different fabrics so that you'll be able to see the difference and it'll look a little bit more festive and, and fun. They prefer red, white, and blue since it's for the vets, but they will not turn down any other colors, okay? So that if there's, you know, something different, that's fine. They're not going to turn it down. And of course, we have fabrics at the store, but this is to encourage you to maybe use some of your stash. It's a good way because you need two pieces that are going to be 18 inches by 44. That's a width of fabric. So you could use some leftover blocks. You could use something that you quilted. So the one, um, there is a YouTube video that shows you how to make them. I watched it today, made a couple changes because you know I always got to change something. Uh, the one Michelle had was some home deck fabric that she had, so it's heavier and sturdier. Well, most of us have a stash of cotton. So I'm going to show you how to make it out of cotton, add that piece of batting in there, and we'll be off to the, off to the races. So the walker, bagger, walker bag for vets, again, you'll need two one-half yards of fabric and a piece of batting, 18 by 44 or close. It doesn't have to go all the way to the end because then it just makes the seams a little bit thicker. Um, 18 by 44. And when we're finished, it, the, um, the bag's going to be 18 by 25. By the time we, you know, we make it, fold it up, we make, we put everything on it um, to make the pockets and everything. Two other items that you'll need, of course, your sewing machine. If you've got a walking foot, that's even better. But if you don't, your standard foot will work. This is uh, great for having, um, you know, the kiddos, a basic sewing. You want to learn how to sew and you can give back at the same time. Um, you'll want some type of a marking device. Now the fabric I'm going to show you is dark. It's dark blue. So um, I'm going to be using Clover's Triangle Ch um, Taylor's Chalk. This is the same type of chalk that they use whenever they mark um, suits in the suit stores for alterations. And I found it really works well on the dark, um, the dark fabric. And then you're going to need two pieces of Velcro. Um, we would recommend, I think I measured this, eight, eight inches, 57, yes. Two eight inch pieces of Velcro. 
or one eight inch, we're going to be cutting it. So it will be cut and then um, an option, there's another option if you want to use another little piece if you want one of the bags to be held shut. So I'm going to um, switch over here so I can show you how we're going to get started. <clears throat> so all I have done so far is cut my two pieces and these are my fabrics. In fact, I had Mike pick them out at the store. I sent him a message and said, I need two one half yard cuts. Pick something patriotic and something to go with it. I think he did a darn good job, don't you? Okay, so if you want to, um, you know, if it's stiff enough, you have stabilizer of some sort on there to make it stiff, you can use whatever you want. Um, probably um, even the SF101 that we've got, um, that may be stiff enough, but I'm going to put a piece of batting in it. So I'm going to put a piece of batting. You want to play around with a little bit of quilting. I'm going to show you how easy that is. We're not doing binding. This is super easy and fast. So you're going to lay your batting down. Okay, and if you want to use a little bit of spray, you can um, to get it to hold it together, but I think this will be okay. Then your back fabric or your solid or one at one of them. If you want, um, this happens to be a piece of grunge. That's going to be right side up. Then my top piece, I'm going to put it um, right side down. So we're make, kind of making a, a sandwich with the, um, the meat on the bottom. That's so when we flip it, it's all in the right place. So next up, I'm going to sew, and you can do a half inch seam if you want to. This is 18, so that would make it, um, or a quarter inch seam, whichever is most comfortable for you. Um, but I'm going to leave a place open. You never want to leave it open on the corner. Um, or let's see, or this, we're going to leave it open on the side. So it doesn't matter where, uh, somewhere just kind of somewhere in the middle. And what I would do is I would take, this is how I mark where I'm going to start and stop, is I do put my pins in so that they go toward the, the outside. I'll just smooth this down a little bit. Is I will put one pin here. And so that I don't sew past the pin, I'm going to leave, you know, about a hand, about a hand open. That's that's good enough. Just well, I don't mean it to be good enough, sloppy, but that's um, that is enough. Well, if I pin this, I'll forget where my pins are, so I'm going to stick a pin in this way. That way, I know I can start here, go all the way around four sides, and when I come back here, this is where I'm going to stop. And I'll be back in a moment to show you. Okay, so I've got this sewn all the way around. Um, I started here, and I want to show you when I came back around, and I know this is something I really should have in a darker color. I don't know if you can see on either side. But what I do is where I started, and where I stop, I just turn and sew off the edge. By doing that, whenever you go to flip it inside and you have to finish this edge off, it just makes it um, stay a whole lot um, a whole lot nicer. So I'm going to flip this. Before I do, <clears throat> I am going to round off my corners a little bit. That gets rid of a little bit of the bulk. And you know, while you're doing, this, you could, if you wanted to have a quilted piece of fabric, you could quilt the one side. So you could have, um, you know, one piece of um, quilted fabric. Let's just trim this up a little bit nicer. But you could have a piece of quilted fabric and then plain fabric. So that would be, um, you know, another way to do this and make it nice and sturdy, which is what we're we're looking at. And again, it's a good way to use up some of your fabrics and scraps. Now, um, I had a little bit of extra batting, so before I do my flipping, I do want to go ahead and I'm just going to use my uh, roller and mat here and trim, kind of trim this up. And if you don't have a rotary um, cutter and a mat, don't worry about it. You can use your scissors on this. This is not, um, it's still going to come out very nice. But like I said, it is a great project 
you want to do something, you want the kids to do a service project this summer, you have a sewing machine, there you go. And then they can come up with all kinds of other ideas that they can do. So let me get this turned and I'll be right back. So to turn it, let me just go ahead and show you that as well. Stick your hand in, in between your two layers of your fabric, your focus fabric and your solid. Just stick your hand in there, grab it, and just start to pull through. And we're just going to pull. Then we can do the same thing down here at this other end. Go ahead and there you go. We're just going to take this and pull it. Okay. So it's going to make it a whole lot sturdier. So we're going to have solid and then we're going to have a print and I got to get my corners poked out and here's excellent, excellent tool. You've got your fabric folding pen. You can use that. You're not fabric folding pen. Your R and K turning tool. You just stick it in and you can run it down the seams. Poke out the corners and it just pokes it just like that and it'll get it to lay down nice and flat. And then next up, we're going. what we're going to do is, once we get this all turned, we're going to press it and then we are going to do a little bit of quilting on here to hold it together. So I'll give you a couple ideas on that. You wouldn't have to, you could just take this and press it and it would be ready to go. So hang on and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and it's all sewn together. What I've done is you want to take and you want to find halfway, okay? Our printed side is going to be on that side. This is going to be our solid side. Find halfway and then use your marking device and I'm going to show you a quick, quick, easy way to quilt this. Okay, so we're just going to draw a line. So now I've got a line right down the center. You want to bring your pockets up. Now I'm using my six inch ruler. I'm just going to lay it here in the center so I have a total of six inches space in between the pockets. That's what you want. Okay, I've got a couple other things I want to do but we want to go ahead and mark first. So I'm going to mark three inches on each side. Okay, for, this is going to be for my quilting. This is going to be easy. If you don't have a walking foot or anything else, this will just be the easiest way for you to do it. So I'm going to sew one straight line down through the middle, then on each side. What that's going to allow me to do is I'll be bringing my pocket up and there's the line where my pocket's going to go and then the other side will come up and the same thing right to that line i've got it lined up and i've got my six inches here in the um, six inch space here in the middle although that does not look super straight we're going to fix it <clears throat> that's what i like about this mark this marking look at that it just with a cloth you erase it and you can mark again okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to mark it down the center, then three inches on each side, and then I would go ahead and just come down and mark six inches and six inches again. And that'll give you um, some channel quilting. doesn't have to have a lot, but that'll hold the batting and hold everything in together. So again, we're going to line it up right down the middle here and mark so we've got a marking line okay then three inches on each side of that line draw one here and one here if you've got a six inch ruler that makes life easy okay then i'm going to come over and draw a line there one more I will load my machine with the same color thread top and bottom. I'm going to be using blue, of course, because that's going to blend right in. And line here. 
and one more. And the other thing I'm going to do while I'm doing this, after I get this line here, is I'm going to top stitch across my shorter ends, only the shorter ends. We're not going to do anything down the side yet. We're going to um, top stitch on the shorter ends. So let me do that, and I'll be back with you. Back in a flash. Okay, and I'm back. I always have to test things to make sure it's going to work the way that I want it to. Alright, so here we go. I drew a straight line down through the middle, three inches on each side, and then six inches here, six inches here, and then top stitched at the very end. On the other side I did the same thing from the center over three inches, then six, six, top stitch. Plenty of quilting because you're also going to have um, stitching up the middle for the um, when we stitch the pockets. So you can do more if you want to, but you don't have to. So <clears throat> in the middle we want a six inch piece. <clears throat> so you're going to take once this is all quilted, you've got that sewing done. We're going to fold up from the bottom up to this line right here. <clears throat> okay, And the same thing on the other side. So now my center section, I have six inches down through the center, which is what you want. But before we can finish that, we need to add the Velcro. And the Velcro goes on the other side. So, just to make sure that you're getting these things where you need them, I would go ahead and just put a clip in each side of the pocket, because we know that's where the pockets are going to go. So, just to kind of hold things together, whenever I go to flip it over. Okay, so I've just got, this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Alright, so now you're going to flip it over so that your focus fabric is what's showing on this side. I've already got two on, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's our center seam. We're going to measure. Well, first off, you're going to take your Velcro and you're going to cut it in half or cut it into four inch pieces. So you've got two four inch pieces. It's called Velcro because that's the, the, um, the brand. It's actually loop tape. It's called loop tape because one size has loops and the other has the, the other little fuzzy thing. Okay, so we've got fuzzy here, we're going to put fuzzy here, we've got loop here, we're going to put loop there. Could be the other way, doesn't matter. But to get the right measurements, you want to come down from center, okay, along the edge. You're going to come down five inches, five inches from the center, and that's where your tape is going to start. So it'll be from five inches down to nine and a quarter, approximately. So you start in the center, come down five, that's where your tape is going to start. Then you want it to be an inch and a half, give or take, you want it to be about an inch and a half from this end. So again, you're going to measure from center down five inches, hold it, and then an inch and a half. The other side, same thing five inches from center, an inch and a half. Alright, stick a pin in it. You could use your Stitch Perfection tape to hold it. Um, if you need to take this off, you can use your little marking device here to draw around the tape so if you remove it, you know exactly where that tape needs to go. It's okay to rotate this around. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to come down five inches from center. Okay, I got five inches here. And then an inch and a whoops, an inch and a half in. So an inch and a half in. I'm going to hold it right here. Then I'm going to measure five inches from center. Alright? Get a pin. If you're going to pin, you do need a nice strong one because pins don't like to go through Velcro really well. And that one 
look like it slid a little bit. This is, again, not rocket science, but you do want it to be pretty accurate. By using a bigger piece of Velcro, it allows you to be able to have a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room when you go to sew it, if it doesn't, um, you know, when they go to close it, if things aren't sewn just perfect, okay? So we're gonna do this from the other end. Move it in an inch and a half, so it's gonna be right here. Five inches from center. Okay. Just measure again, five inches from center, an inch and a half. Grab a pin to hold things in place. Now, obviously, we have to take these clips back out because we can't sew. We'll be sewing through everything. So go ahead, and once you've done that, you can take your clips out. Well, you might want to, see just before that, if you want to test it. Okay, so you make sure you've got things where you need it to go. You fold that over. These are going to line up like so. You can see them lined up right there, okay? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew them. That's why you want to make sure you have them pinned or marked so when you test it, you don't lose where it's at. Go ahead and take your clips out. Uh, go to your machine. At this point, I would have changed my needle to an 8012. I would recommend um, an 8012 or a 9014 when you're sewing through all of these layers. And I'm just going to go over and um, sticking with my blue thread because that way it's um, you know it's going to be inside but the blue will look much better um, on here it's not going to show up as well so I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around the edges on this you do not have to stitch in the middle but you do want to stitch all the way around the edges so that it um, holds it um, best to start in the middle not to start on one of the corners that way there's less stress back stitch if you want to maybe you want to stitch around it twice so that when they pull it on and off it'll be a, a little bit more stable so I will be back okay so velcro's on next up what you're going to do is once you've got the, the velcro got any threads that you need to snip go ahead and get your thread snipped make sure it's sewed around you may need to sew it around twice make sure you catch it and then we're going to turn it back over, okay? You've got a couple threads there, you can snip those threads. And we're going to fold our pockets up, okay? And again, back to the middle. Here's our middle. So we're gonna fold this pocket up to this point here, all right? The pins here are what's holding, remember that area that was open? We've got it um, open. And one of the things that you can do is you can, let's just go ahead, I've got that marked. That's going to catch that one. If you're not sure it's going to catch it, you've got pins. You can also use our R&K Stitch Perfection Tape. Comes in quarter inch, comes in half inch. Makes life so much easier. It's like having extra hands. Since that's a quarter of an inch, that's all I need. I don't need the... Okay, so what I will do to show you is okay. I'm going to take, so this is, see how that's open because that's where we turned it. I am going to cut a piece of this tape. It's a double sided tape, it does wash away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a piece right here on, doesn't matter which size, which or which side. Okay. If I hit it with the iron, it will It'll stick it together, or stick it. Then you can let it cool off just a little bit, and you can take the paper off, and then it's sticky on both sides. And what we're going to do, pull that aside, 
then when you close that up and hit it with the iron, now it's going to hold it in place and it'll just make it a whole lot easier for me. It's like having extra hands. I don't need pins there. It'll get caught when I do the top stitching all the way around the edge. Great for all kinds of things, binding and other stuff that you need. Okay. So we're going to pull back to our center. Okay. Line this one up. And at this point, I'm going to go back to the clips to hold it in place. All right, the clip here, just to hold things. And the clip on this side. And the same thing there. You can measure things up again, so you make sure you've got it all lined up. You can take your ruler if you want to. That works as a nice for right here, sectioning it off to make sure I've got my six inches. So I've got my six inches in there. And just a clip there and a clip here. These clips are amazing. They come in different sizes. You can get a whole box full. They're not cheap, but they are good. All right, so, whoops. Oh, it slid because I didn't have the whole thing clipped. All right, get that clip underneath there. Okay, so got everything clipped. Now, we need to make a couple pockets. What we're going to do is they're asking for one to be five inches, and that's so they can put their water bottle in it. So if they have a water bottle, um, Progressive is going to supply them with water bottles, and so that's why um, they want to make sure that one of these is five inches. So we can measure from the top, from the bottom, so from one side, and if you take your, again, use your chalk, and you can mark that five inches, and if you want to, use your little straight edge ruler thing here, line it up straight across the top, straight down the side. There I'm going to have a pocket, and then they'll have a you know, a bigger pocket on this side. So you know, not know in which way, if they're left-handed or right-handed, right? Maybe we should put a five-inch pocket on each side. What do you think? And so if we put this on the walker, okay, it can go that way. That would be, you know, if it's easier for him to grab it out on that side. Let me think this through here. Or if we turn it around, it would be on this side. So actually, what we might do, depending on, like I said, if they're left-handed, right-handed, or you know, whatever, let's make on this one. I am going to make a pocket, a five-inch pocket on this side. That way, they can use it on either side and make it most comfortable for them. Um, right-handed on that side. If they've got it on this side, or left-handed and right-handed. I think that's what we're going to do. And then we won't need any extra Velcro, because then you'll have this pocket, and then this one won't be too um, too saggy for you. So let's just go ahead and we're going to measure over here five inches. Use my little straight edge again. And all right, so now back to the machine. I'm going to stitch this line, this line, and then I'm going to stitch all the way around or down the sides. I don't know. I think I might stitch on the bottom too just to give it a little extra. I, don't know. I think now all we have to do is down the sides because we're across the top, down both sides. Take a look and see. Then you can decide if you want to do a top stitch at the bottom. That would make the pocket a little bit smaller. So, down both sides. Be back in a minute, and it will be finished. Okay, so here you have it. It's been top stitched down both sides, five inches from the edge on either side, so that there's a nice pocket. Um, by top stitching it all the way around, I caught any and all of those extra stitches. Got a few threads here to knit. Um, the last thing that I would suggest is here where you've um, made your pocket, 
and on the edges that you do a little tacked stitch. And what that is is similar to what you see on your um, you'll see on your jeans, on your belt loops, and different things. But it's a tack stitch. I don't know if I can get this close enough for you to be able to see because it is in blue. But it's like a real tight little zigzag. And just do that at the top of each one. That'll just add some extra stability for them when they put their bottles in and out. And then you can fold it over. Everything's all sewn together. And there you have it. Water bottle can go in here. That's not a water bottle, but there you go. You can put flip this up here so you can see. So you could put your water bottle in. They have a place, or they could put, you know, if they have a phone, they could have their phone in there. The phone will fit just as, as well. You've got a room to put your, if you're going to get the mail, or you've got a book, or something like that. They have all of those things, um, the capability of putting it in, and it just gives them a little bit more freedom, the men and the women there. So let me just go back over in case you missed it or you need to write them down again. Let me just go over the numbers, because everybody wants to know what's the numbers, what's the pattern. Okay, what you need, and I drew one little picture. It's a little hard to see there, but there's a picture of the, yeah, the drawing. Um, you need two half yard cuts of fabric, and you can see by having something fun and then um, a solid color, it makes it easier as you, um, you know, the solid colors in the middle, it becomes the inside of the pocket, makes it a little bit easier when you're following the directions. It makes it a little bit more fun. That way you can have, you know, a little bit of both. So you're gonna need two one yard cuts of fabric if you wanna put the batting in. And I showed you how to do that and you can see that just makes it much more, uh, much sturdier if you um, put batting in there. And then, let's see, you're going to, remember, put it together, batting, then the two right sides of fabric together, and you're going to sew them all the way around. Um, if you want to quilt, remember the, the number, we um, drew a line straight, oops, straight down the center, then over three inches on each side. That was an easy measurement for us to line the pocket up, gave us a line, gave us a quilting, and then every six inches, which means a couple more times this way, a couple times that way, and the last one to be right along your short edges. You don't have to um, top stitch the um, sides until you get it folded up. Your Velcro, you want um, about eight inches of Velcro so you can cut it in half two four inch pieces. Remember the Velcro is going to go on the back five inches from center over an inch and a half from the edge. Kind of measure it up, make sure it all uh, works together. Sew around your Velcro, make sure you get it sewn down well. You may need to sew around it twice. And um, then your finish size should be, let's measure this and see, should be um, 18 by 25. So let's see. By the time we're done, did we get this 18 by, look at that, 18 by 25, right there on, on the dot. We got it. So then the pockets, when you go to um, put your pockets on, come over five inches from each side and make a seam. That way it gives them a nice big pocket on each side. It gives them the ability to put their water bottle in if they're left-handed or right-handed, whichever works better for them. They can use one for their cell phone. Um, I think that gives you, let me just double check. Um, it, it's easy, okay, half inch seam allowance. I did it with a quarter of an inch, but you can do a quarter of an inch, half inch, uh, whatever's comfortable for you. I did quarter, it's what I'm used to, and then um, I used my walking foot and top stitched, you do want to put in a heavier needle. So you want um, an 8012 or a 9014 needle. And that's it. There you go. You've got the hook and loop tape. You're ready to go. So I hope to see you on the 17th. Um, 
just you can go onto our site and sign up but if you want to do it on your own or you just need the measurements and need the information uh, we're gonna have some fun when we do it at the, the class and again challenging you you don't have to go and buy the fabric go through your stash if you've got you know some stash fabric you have some quilt blocks you have some jelly roll strips you have leftover stuff see how you can put it together and come up with something cute maybe we'll even have a little contest so um, thank you and um, I'm sure the veterans will thank you as well and we will see you in another class.